everybody and welcome, it's Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks video. So today we're going to be looking at how you can build and expand your libraries, particularly focusing on plants for Vectorworks and Twinmotion. I've been working with lots of landscape architects and garden designers recently and this is one of the things they always ask me is how can we get better plants both for Vectorworks and Twinmotion. So that's what we're going to take a look at today but this could apply to furniture and other interior items for your models too. But I hope you enjoy the video. Okay everybody, so the very first thing we're going to do on this video is just explore some of the new libraries in the BIM Object website. Now BIM Object has been around for a while and if you haven't visited it, um, it's worth taking another look. It seems to have had a really nice overhaul in terms of the interface. It's a lot cleaner and uh, more sophisticated than before. But what I've been noticing uh, lately is the addition of some really nice new plant libraries. And these are great because as I said, I've been working with lots of landscape designers and garden designers and they're always asking, where can we get more libraries from? So this is a great place to start. So what you can notice is um, it presents the first page with lots of different sort of topics for you. But if you would like to, just go up to the search dialog, type in the word, say plants, um, and hit search. And then it will kind of use the filter to actually show you anything with that tag in. So you can see some really nice libraries. You can kind of go into these in a bit more detail. Um, get lots of information about it, of course, because it's a BIM object as well as a, a graphical object. And when you're ready, you can actually just click on to download. Now, you'll notice that when you click download, there's lots of different file formats available now, which is excellent. Um, and a lot of these are actually going to come into your CAD software. I'm using Vectorworks, of course. Um, many of these will come in, but I find... Um, really nice and reliable is the SketchUp file import. If I wanted the BIM information, I would bring the um, IFC. So let's go ahead and just click download and download that file format. There we go. That's actually downloaded now. So you can see it's now available for me to go and drag into my file. So let's have a quick explore around some of these models a bit more. We'll just go back one level here. You can also uh, view by product, which is a really nice feature. So when you're looking for specific manufacturers, you can actually source and buy. This is great. Now I've kind of clicked on um, a few of my sort of favorite files, and here's a few that I'm going to work with. Um, you can see that I've already downloaded some of these already, but really just to clarify, all you need to do is click on the arrow. And what I really like about this is you can actually select multiple items and download them all at once if you would like to. So just for an example, um, all you need to do here is basically click into the object here and download, click it as a favourite file, that's it. Then we go back and if I click onto my favourites now that will be added. So it's very easy for me to kind of download all of those in one go. So I've already downloaded a few of these and let me just show you the um, folder where they're stored. So here we go, we've got a new SketchUp plants folder. Um, so You'll notice the previews don't actually work at the moment when you press spacebar on the Mac. Um, if you have SketchUp, obviously you can open these with SketchUp, but I'm actually going to just take these and drag them straight into Vectorworks. So let's take uh, the small one to begin with. I'll do one at a time and then we'll do multiple. And one really lovely feature is we can just drag and drop, and that'll be enough to start importing directly into our Vectorworks 3D software. So there's really only one setting you need to worry about here. Just go to Options and just tell Vectorworks to create Renderworks textures from the SketchUp model. Let's click OK and wait a few moments while the SketchUp model imports. OK, that's pretty good. So um, let's reduce the scale a little bit because it's only a sort of smaller item. Let's go 1 to 20 and let's have a look around. So we'll go to 3D views and let's zoom in. Let's go up and do quick render in OpenGL. And look at the kind of detail that you've got. You know, it's uh, not photorealistic or anything, but the good thing is it's relatively low polygon count and it's going to be quite a nice little element that we can use in our design. Now, I have noticed that when you click on these, all of the different um, elements come in as 3D symbols. So if you do Command R at this stage and go and look at the file that we've just imported, not only can you see the RenderWorks textures have come in, uh, by the way, you can actually alter the tone of these if you want to change the the colour of the, the greens or the pot or something. You'll notice um, if you go to symbols and plugins that there's going to be quite a few of those, in fact almost every leaf. And I've noticed that each one of them has individual names. Now this is a bit undesirable because I don't really want all of the individual um, symbols coming into my file. So a really good little trick here is to select all of the model, go up to modify 
and use this command uh, apple k uh, convert to group what that will basically do is allow you to explode this group of symbols okay and if there are any nested symbols we may as well do that one too so when i click ok now um, all of those uh, symbols will be converted to groups okay by the looks of things wonder if there's a few there there might be no that's okay and what's more important is if i now follow that up with a command called purge you'll notice that vectorworks will basically purge all of the unused items in my model okay and there's definitely going to be some symbols in there there we go 59 of them so we'll click OK again it gives you another sort of opportunity just to make sure you're not purging anything you actually want to get rid of when I click OK it really cleans this file up so it's a good little tip now the next thing we would like to do is actually select this model and right click on my workspace if you've got my enhanced workspace and go to create symbol now do remember if you haven't got my JRA workspace you can just do it from the modify menu but it's super nice to have my lovely workspace uh, right click create symbol so let's call this um, spiky plant one probably you ought to go for a slightly more technical name but that will do for me if I want to I can also assign it of course to a new class new class at the same time Let's just call that plants as a class and what we'll do is we'll just click OK. So basically when we store this symbol away um, the only symbol that you're actually going to see now in the file is this one as opposed to all those individual leaves. Now a couple of nice little tips here if you right click um, you can basically view that in a 3D view and if you right click again you can actually view it in render mode which is quite sweet. Um, you can do the same over here which makes sense so let's render that up maybe in a top plan view as well and finally one extra great little tip i really recommend to you is to add some data tags so go to right click add tag so what we could do we can type in as many tags as we want but i'm going to call this jra plant okay and that's nice because i know now when i search for uh, plants as long as i type in the word jra plant it will search and it will only find my particular plants whereas if i do a more general search for plant it will find all the different plants in my vectorworks library system okay you can see there's only one in there so that's all it found but i could also add further tags um i could type in another tag and let's call this uh spiky so that would be another tag that i could use to search excellent so this is a nice little technique and it presents a symbol well so let's move on to one other aspect here and um, when I look at the symbol in rendered view in 3d it look, kind of looks pretty nice but what I'd quite like to do is have this graphic in my top plan view which is my normal sort of architectural floor plans so this is a really clever way that I've developed to achieve this okay so the very first thing that I'm going to do is drop the scale of my layer down a bit more to maybe 1 to 10 and the reason I do that is just so the model appears sort of a bit bigger on the layer and then what we're going to do is go and get this amazing tool called the render bitmap tool and basically render a little bitmap around the image okay now just before you do use that tool i'd recommend you just pop up into the settings and just change it to maybe 300 dpi which i've done before and do whatever you do just make sure that you make the bounding box slightly larger or big enough to get the plant okay really good so we've got a bitmap image now here is the lovely tip we can click cut command x cut the 2d image there double click into the 2d component of the plant and just paste it in okay it doesn't quite always land where you want it so that's fine just snap it back okay and maybe just nudge it using shift and the arrow keys and then um, for an extra little tip here i would definitely do this for you call it symbol hyphen um, let's call it um, graphic render okay now that means that you can easily if you do want to when you come out of the symbol turn this on and off so now when I'm looking in my top plan view you can see I've got a really nice view if I did want to turn that off for some reason I can okay so I can just turn it off completely um, what I often do as well is I double click and I have several copies so I'll just do copy and let's just paste in place okay so I've got two of them now just to show you okay then I would go to uh, image effects and I would do a sort of much brighter 
desaturated, almost black and white version. Okay, and I'd put that in another class. So let's call this symbol hyphen black and white. Okay, fine. So turn that on and off to toggle between the different types of graphics there. So excellent little tip on symbols. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that so far. Um, let's go ahead and skip on a bit further and I will import the others as well. Good, okay, so um, let's just turn my sort of base layer back on. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this library uh, building so far. I just want to talk about managing it a tiny bit more. So as we said here, um, all of these plants, we can right click, select the rendered view here, and then we can right click again, just select them all again, right click and actually render them up in that little view, which is really nice. Okay, so do for, don't forget just to kind of add in those extra little things like the tags as well. So let's just sort of type in JRA plants, plant or do or plants. Cool. Okay, so that means all of them are tagged now and that means I can find them in the future. Now the final little lovely step is I could right click and I could add this file to my favorites. Okay, and I can stash those away in my 3D libraries. Excellent. So the next time I need some plants, I've done all the work, you know, my sort of downtime, if you like. Um, and I've basically got all these lovely libraries building up. So whenever I do a new project, I can kind of add to this and always know exactly where it is um, whenever I need it. And that's a really nice aspect to creating libraries. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at how these translate into twin motion, and how you can build custom twin motion libraries in another video. But thanks for watching and I really hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, do check out my website. There's lots and lots of videos on there. But there's also lots of libraries that you can actually buy, including things like my uh, furniture libraries, my wall libraries and things like this as well. So I really hope you enjoy those. Um, you can see I'm quite a big fan of making different types of libraries and using them. But building your own custom libraries is one of the most fun things. And it does save a lot of time when you come on to real projects. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.